For auscultation of the heart, you may choose between two sequences. In the first, start with the diaphragm of the stethoscope and progress from the right second interspace to the left second interspace and down the left sternal border to the apex. Then, with the bell of the stethoscope, listen again at the mitral and tricuspid areas. Starting in the right second interspace helps orient you to the cardiac cycle. In the second sequence, start with the bell and listen first at the mitral and tricuspid areas. Then change to the diaphragm and, starting in the aortic area, listen to all five areas from above down. Starting at the mitral area is useful when you've had to turn the patient to find the apical impulse. The first auscultation sequence is shown in this video. What I'm going to do now is listen to your heart in the various areas of your chest. Now adjust your stethoscope so that you'll be listening through the diaphragm. When pressed firmly on the chest, the diaphragm is best for hearing relatively high-pitched sounds, such as S1, S2, the murmurs of aortic and mitral regurgitation, and pericardial friction rubs. Begin listening at the right second interspace close to the sternum. Note the cardiac rate and rhythm. Identify the first and second heart sounds and listen for extra heart sounds and murmurs. Please breathe deeper than normal. Then listen at the left second interspace. Try to hear splitting of S2. Here it is abnormally wide. It comes and goes with respiration. Continue to breathe deep. Proceed along the left sternal border to the third interspace. Again, listen for splitting of S2. Continue to the fourth interspace. and then to the fifth interspace. Finally, listen at the apex. Now switch to the bell of the stethoscope, which is more sensitive to low-pitched sounds, such as S3, S4, and the murmur of mitral stenosis. Listen at the apex again. in the fifth interspace and in the fourth interspace. Now that you've seen the listening areas in sequence, focus on the heart sounds in each area. S2 is usually louder than S1 in the aortic area. Please breathe deeper than normal. S2 is usually louder in the pulmonic area also. Note the late inspiratory splitting of S2. Its first component, A2, is aortic. Its second component, P2, comes from pulmonic valve closure. In the left third interspace, both A2 and P2 may be heard again. S2 usually diminishes in intensity as you proceed down the left sternal border. Meanwhile, S1 usually gets a little louder. 
In the tricuspid area, S1 may sound split. Its softer second component comes from closure of the tricuspid valve. Here at the mitral area, S1 is usually louder than S2. It comes from closure of the mitral valve. To improve your ability to hear S3, S4, and the murmur of mitral stenosis, have the patient roll partway onto his left side, which brings the left ventricle closer to the chest wall. Then recheck the position of the apical impulse and place the bell lightly on it. If the patient had an audible S3, it would sound like this. Now notice how the third heart sound disappears when the bell is placed more firmly on the chest wall. Listen again with light pressure. With firm pressure. And once again with light pressure. To help detect aortic murmurs, especially that of aortic regurgitation, have the patient sit up and lean forward. Then ask him to exhale completely and hold his breath out. Using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, listen at the left second interspace and down the left sternal border to the apex. Breathe out completely again and hold it. Pause periodically to allow the patient to breathe. Listen for the high-pitched diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation. If the patient had this murmur, it would sound like this. You may breathe. Take another deep breath. Breathe out and hold it. Heart murmurs can be distinguished from heart sounds by their longer duration. Diastolic murmurs, like this one, usually indicate heart disease. Systolic murmurs can occur in healthy people or in those with heart disease. For example, a loud mid-systolic murmur may be heard in aortic stenosis. If you hear such a loud murmur, palpate the area with the ball of your hand. Palpable vibrations associated with a heart murmur are called a thrill.